Okay, now I'd like to introduce colour modes. I'm going to introduce three. The first being CMYK, the next being Pantone, and the final one being RGB. Now, CMYK is what I use all the time. On rare occasions, I will use Pantone and RGB. So it's what I suggest you start out with and have lesser concern of the other two until you become familiarised and the client does demand it. So to start off, a CMYK document needs to have a colour mode of CMYK selected beneath advanced in the new document window. With that selected, we click OK. The same is used for Pantone. If we're working with Pantone, we can also select CMYK because the CMYK mode can replicate Pantone colours. If we were to choose RGB, this mode can't replicate Pantone colours. So we'll go in and click OK. And we'll hide that artboard. And we'll paste in these. Now as you can see, we have a colour named Cyan, a colour named Magenta, a colour named Yellow, and a colour named Black. Clicking upon Cyan, we can see that's at 100% denoted by a C in the colour panel. The rest are turned down to 0%. So there's none of those colours, none of magenta, none of yellow, and none of black, denoted by a K, which stands for key, which we won't get into, it just stands for key. And magenta features 100% magenta, denoted by the M, with the other sliders down to 0%. Yellow, that's up 100, the rest are down to 0 in the colour panel. Black is up 100, whilst the rest... Or down to zero so this just shows you the extreme of each color and these colors are the colors that feature in your printer cartridge so when you come to print something no matter what the color in CMYK mode it'll always be a mix of these four colors assuming that the sliders are turned up beyond zero so I'm going to take a copy of these circles to show you how we can use the four colours to make other colours. So if we go into our colour panel, we can manipulate the sliders so that we're mixing the CMYK. So as you can see, we've came up with this colour here, which is kind of light brown or a sand colour. Selecting the next circle, bringing up some yellow there we have an orange colour. Selecting the next, we could bring this up to make a green colour. So the extra cyan helps to make this green. Selecting the final circle, bringing down the black. And with a bit of yellow, yellow set at 49% and magenta at 100%, we get a shade of red. So this is how the CMYK colour mode works and all default colours you see in the swatches panel are also composed of those four colours. Quite often the client won't be familiar with colour modes so the CMYK option is the best default to start with. If you know that the client is planning some particular printing then you can ask if they've been in contact with their printing company to confirm that they don't require or they do require the Pantone colour system. So I'm going to go right ahead and show you Pantone and click window at the top of the screen, swatch libraries. Then I'm going to go to colour books and then scroll down to Pantone solid uncoated. Clicking upon this, a vast palette of colours opens. Each one of these is a Pantone solid uncoated colour with a unique name. If we mouse over one of these colours, we'll see this is Pantone 3308U and it's a form of dark green. If we take these circles and we make a copy, we'll make some Pantone colours. Selecting the first, we'll select Pantone 292U. 
which is a light blue color with this circle we'll select a brown which is Pantone 4625U and next we'll treat to a red which is Pantone 188U and we'll scroll down to see what else is available and for the last circle we'll treat that to Pantone 7474U and there we have our Pantone colours at the bottom. The difference between Pantone colours and CMYK is that each Pantone colour is developed using its unique ink, whereas CMYK colours are developed using a combination of cyan, magenta, yellow and black. Or at least some use of those colours, depending upon the position of the sliders we adjusted earlier. Now selecting one of those Pantone colours, you might note that those CMYK sliders have now been replaced by a Pantone single ink tint slider. So now the only change we can make is to reduce the tint of that single ink down from 100%. Now I'm going to close down the Pantone window and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to develop an RGB which might be a rarity but I'll show you anyways. Go to file new and for an RGB document we need to select RGB in colour mode underneath advanced. There is a warning sign there because it's not too common to develop an RGB as I've already said. So click OK and I'll just rid of that artboard and we'll do three similar circles and I'll click the first one I'll take the red up the R of RGB stands for red the G of RGB stands for green and the B stands for blue so we're putting the slider right up and we're taking the rest down to zero so there we have the red, the green and the blue of the RGB colour mode now the first thing that will stand out with these colours is their brightness the RGB system is designed for on screen display this means that these colours can only be displayed on a screen with a backlight. The brightness is dependent upon the light. These colours can never be replaced or replicated by ink. So if we ever have a logo to design which is going to be printed would always use CMYK or Pantone colour systems. So to summarise, the RGB colour systems colours although they have values in the colour panel, the actual appearance will always depend upon the brightness of the screen. With a CMYK colour system, the colours will have variation according to the printer type, paper type and level of ink. The Pantone system will always be accurate because it's defined by a single unchanging ink. The Pantone system in print is colour perfect but it doesn't offer the same cost effectiveness as CMYK which is a lot cheaper especially whilst print and medium which includes a vast array of colours. So this concludes the explanation of the three primary colour modes.